Yes, thank you very much for having me. I'm very excited. This is my first time crossing the equator, so I am really, really chuffed to be here. Um, as Christina said, I have only just started my new job at Cranfield three weeks ago, and for them to let me out for two weeks away already, I'm really, really thankful for. And um, if I do shed a tear, it's because I am very sad to have left Solent. It's one of the most amazing places to work, so I'm very happy that they still let me share their story with you. So. I've been told I've got to try and fill more than an hour, so I'm more than happy at the end to show you what our Mahara looks like from an admin point of view. So if you do have any questions at the end, I'm very, very happy to dig in there and show you what we've got. So just very quickly, I wanted to show you where Southampton is in the world. So we have the UK and we're right down on the bottom, in the middle, on the coast. And what's great about that is it's a very big maritime port. So we are known as a modern university. So in England, you've got the red brick traditional type universities, and then you've got these newer, more sort of modern uh, media type universities. And we sort of fit in that category. So a lot of our students, when they leave the university, they are already ready for work. They are very skill orientated. But they also have the theory as well to back it up. Um, some of the key aims of the university, and um, these may change because they do have a new vice chancellor now, but employability, social justice and business engagement. So having an e-portfolio has really, really helped the university work towards those three, get three main aims. There's around about 18,000 students as well, so it's roughly about 11,000 full-time on-campus students, but they do actually have quite a large part-time mature learner body, which is fantastic as well. And all of them get to use Mahara. So I'm hopefully going to be able to show you exactly where we were in 2008 when we're thinking about how do we support a vast number of students with different skills and different um, levels of education um, with their personal development. And it all started off with the wonderful Dr Barbara Lee. So she had this wonderful project um, to look into how Solent supports students and how could we foster um, a desire to look at their own personal development. So we looked at courses, so we did some course audits to see what the lecturers were actually doing with the students, what sort of information they were giving, what advice, what skills. And then we actually looked at the students and say, well, you're getting all this fantastic information, what do you do with it once you get it? Do you store it? Do you write it down? And it found, we found out that they did all sorts of things. Some of them made notes, some of them wrote it down on a Word document, some kept it on their pen drives, some didn't do anything at all. So we thought, well, what can we do? So we asked them, if we gave you an e-portfolio, would you use it? And it was a resounding yes. And with these focus groups as well, we said to them, what do you want it to look like? And half the group said, we want a big Solent branded thing. And the other half said, no, we don't want any Solent branding, we want our own personal branding on it. So we then had to think, OK, we've got our ideas, we know what we're going to do, let's try and find a solution, a portfolio solution to help. So we had a look. We had a look at ELG, which was mentioned earlier, uh, my stuff from the OU, PebblePad, obviously Mahara, we looked at WordPress, and we looked at Moodle. And we tried to find out how um, our students could use these tools to support their personal development. And the obvious choice for us was Mahara. We are a Moodle university, Mahara just felt right. What we also loved about Mahara is that it had a demo site, so I, I could actually go in and play with it. I can build pages, I can show them to people, which I couldn't do with any of the other sites. So yeah, we had a demo site, it's open source. Solent have a wonderful team of developers who sit with the learning technologist. So we hear from the teachers what it, was, what it is they want to do with technology. We can then tell it to the developers. The developers can play. They pass it on to us and we can test it with the academics. And it's a wonderful partnership that we had. So, and also the amazing community. You're all absolutely fantastic. We love um, the Mahara community. In the early steps, when we were asking questions, we got answers almost immediately, normally from Christina. But we just thought, it just felt really, really right. So we decided we'd go for it. Um, here is Barbara Lee. Um, I tried as hard as I can to get as many people as I could on camera to talk about it because, you know, it isn't just me. I'm just a small cog in a big machine. I just, <coughs> I just happen to shout out about it a lot more often. So this is Dr. Barbara Lee. She's going to talk about how we got into the project from the beginning. And I really hope the sound works. 
I'm Dr. Barbara Lee and I'm the reader in Learning and Teaching. Well, when we initially scoped the project out, we wanted to get two things out of it. The first was that we wanted to be sure that it would work with our existing virtual learning environment because it's very important that we have something that students can access with one click. They're online, they want to use it, there they are. The second was that we wanted it to be very usable for students. So we surveyed students, we asked them what they wanted, how they would want to use it. We did a lot of road testing with them on the portfolio itself and also on the help sheets that have been created for them. You know, the end result is to try and produce something that students want to use throughout the course for their own personal development. So it's got to be a creative space that they feel that they can own. I think that we've learned a lot about personal development planning when we started this project and we realised that it's very difficult if you impose something on students and ask them to do things for you because it takes the emphasis from the fact it's about them and their personal self. So we wanted to do something that they could use but we also needed to make sure that it fit with all the other institutional practices so we needed to have involvement from the career service to make sure that the, um, the new product would use the CV planner and the other tools that they've created. We wanted to talk to the faculties and to ask them about the different ways they might want to make use of it in their teaching. And obviously it's uh, the, the learning technologies themselves and the investigation they did and the way that they looked out into the Mahara community to keep improving and, and perfecting a product that would really be usable by students that I think made this a long-term successful project. And that was um, you know, really important that it wasn't just a learning technologist um, team imposing technology on the university saying this is what you should have. It was led by a senior academic, she, she handpicked her team of careers advisors, learning technologists and academics and we worked together as a team and that's what made it really, really good. So our first steps, there was a bit of an ugly duckling, you know, when you get it out of the box back in 2008, 2009, it was very green, very clunky, um, I had to do lots of fake smiles of academics saying, yes, it's really easy to use and you will love it and your students won't need any help at all, but obviously, as we all knew, it, uh, it did, does have a big hump at the beginning, a big technological hump you have to get over, but once you've got over that, it's, it is plain sailing and that is what I found from our students. So. We tried to um, do not too much work to it um, when it came out of the box, We just because we wanted to see what it could do without us tinkering about with it. Because as you'll see um, in a minute when I show you what Amahara looks like, it's very customised, which is quite exciting. So we decided to run a pilot study and um, this was interesting because I was allowed to work with um, some students. Um, and we also uh, picked out a couple of academics who uh, showed some interest and we tried to look at a wide range of courses so it wasn't just media based courses, it was lots of different subject areas. And um, we did some usability testing with our help resources so I spent some time putting together help guides for the students just to see if you know, I could actually step back, say right you've got to, you know, these are the tools, you help yourself, you know, I will step in if you need me but we really want to try and you know, I don't want to be teaching thousands of students how to upload a file in Mahara. I, we need them to do it themselves. Um, we also gained some feedback from staff and students and um, we looked at customising bits of Mahara. And those of you that were at the workshop yesterday, um, you, you can see how um, we have fiddled with some of the help files. So in the UK we don't have resumes, we have CVs. Um, so we broke the C CV builder and made it our own and inserted our own careers advice in there and links to our own careers advisors. And yeah, we stuck a great big Sonic logo in the corner which clashed awfully with the green. But never mind. <laughs> so the outcomes were, you know, students liked it but it took them a while to like it. So after a couple of weeks they thought, well, okay, I get it now. I'm going to go back to the beginning and start again, which I was really shocked by. I thought they would just leave it. But no, they were very keen to go back again from the beginning and follow my help again and try to you know, make it look even better than what it was. Um, yeah, the language needed to change more to reflect UK terminology. So we took out the uh, cover letter because 
you know, it, it's, it's different in the UK. You don't have to have a covering letter all the time. If you do, it has to be something separate. It's very formal. So we changed that to personal profile because at the top of every UK CV, you have a personal profile before you start with your um, education. Lecturers were keen to not get involved. Now, I say that. They were obviously very, very keen for their students to use it and they were very eager to see what their students did with it. But they didn't want to learn it themselves. They did not want to know how it worked. And that was a bit of a sticking point for me because you know, I don't want their students coming to me to ask for help. I, you know, my job is to pass on my knowledge to the lecturer, support the lecturer, and the lecturer is the all-knowing person in the room with their students. I said to the lecturers, I'm more than happy to help you. I can sit with you for hours but I will not go into your classroom and teach your students because that is not my role. Um, and yeah, and having um, the help resources were useful. So I didn't think the students would use them, but they did. They found them really useful and they gave me really good feedback as well. Because as we all know, once you get familiar with something, you can forget steps along the way and expect them to know it, but obviously they don't, they need it step by step. So as you can see, these are a couple of the first examples back years and years ago, they're not too bad, but you know, we love our massive, great big My Portfolio logo in the corner. So after all of our trials and our um, sort of evaluation, we thought, well, okay, we need to have a better help site. So we built a help site in Mahara. We needed guides for personal development advice because, you know, as um, as professionals, we all know about professional development. It's all part of our jobs to better ourselves continuously. Students, they just want to get through their degree. They just want their bit of paper at the end. They don't think about this until they've already got their jobs. So it's giving them advice to help them along the way so they are career ready as soon as they finish. Um, we got the careers experts to write better help resources for the resume builder, so the CV. And we just went full whack with it. We said, right, OK, it's there, open for business. If you want to use Mahara, get in touch. We will help you. So we went for it. And then this happened. I was so gutted. It was all about personal development. Give your students the tools to help themselves. And the academics just said, look, but we want to use it for assessment. Like, it's not an assessment tool, it's a personal development tool. As soon as you, you know, force your students to use it, they're not going to use it. They're not going to do this. But they said if it's part of an assessment, then they will. They'll have to use it, which I felt a bit funny about, but you know, I'm there to support the academics. It's what they want, and I had to go with it. And I'm really glad we did. Really glad we did. So we had a few teething problems with that. Our assessment regulations say that work on a live platform cannot be submitted as a final piece of work. You have to lock it down. And the uh, Mahoodle plugin it was not good enough. It had to be a static site. So that's when the um, export came into play and that was very, very handy for us because our students could export their work as a HTML zip file and then upload it to Moodle and supply a live link. Oh, it's, it's a nightmare. But we got around the assessment regulations. Academic misconduct as well. So if anybody puts their work in an online environment that's available to other people to copy, that's academic misconduct. Well, we're encouraging our students to build an online presence, an online profile with their work. Of course, they're going to share it with each other for feedback. How do we get around it? Mahara is now exempt, which is fantastic. Um, the submission process defined. So like I said, um, you know, our students now have to extract their work and upload it to um, my course, which is what we call our Moodle. But that, you know, it, we need a better way of doing it. File size issues as well. So we have students that do um, like computer games work. They're massive files. And you can't have, you know, 50, 60 gigabytes of data in an e-portfolio and then export it and try and upload it to Moodle. It just won't work. And then this whole, it's still, can you come and teach my students? Which bit? There's so much to it. What do you want me to do with them? Oh, just show them how it works. No, <laughs> it's not how it works. And that's when we came to um, like a really good conclusion, which I'll show you again in a minute. So we were off, off and running. And we have, I have a couple of portfolios to show you. So 
If you are looking into using Mahara for the first time, if you're here for fact-finding missions, my biggest bit of advice is to find a champion. Find a lecturer who you trust, they trust you, and you give them all the time in the world. Because if it works for them, they're going to speak positively about you and your work, and everybody else will be influenced by them. Because at the end of the day, I'm a learning technologist, I'm not a teacher. You know, what do I know? I'm just a techie, which, you know, it does frustrate me, but, you know, that's, that's the way it works. So the PR and communications, this, this team here, um, led by Sally Holland, amazing academic, she gets her students in their second year to look at ways of uh, improving themselves. So looking at them, their chosen career and their entire portfolio is them logging all the uh, personal development activities that they do so that when they um, come to work placements in the summer, they are ready. And then in the third year, they use their portfolios to reflect on their planning and fill in any gaps that they may have. So hopefully I can show you some. I hope it doesn't come up in IE. Is this on Wi-Fi as well? You think it does? I already pre-loaded those that I want to create. Okay, so we have one here by Olivia. And she's done a lot of pages in this. So she has a dream of um, working in PR, especially in fashion. Okay? And she is actually a real fantastic student because she is one of our um, peer mentors. So when she was in the third year, so she's currently finishing her final year at the moment, she goes back into the second year group and she acts as a mentor for the students in that room. So she is absolutely brilliant. What she does with her students is fantastic because she's already got a working knowledge off Mahara. She already has experience of doing work experience. She's a, she can actually work with the students and help them really, really prepare. And it means there's less burden on Sally, the teacher, as well, in trying to keep up to date with all the changes and the upgrades. So she does think. Does she do that as a volunteer? Or is yeah, it's um, I'm not sure if she's paid. I'd stay out of that. All I know is I'm thankful that she's there. But um, yeah, there is a mentoring program at Solent, so I don't know whether she's paid for a central careers team. Yeah, be interesting to see. But she did fantastic things like preparing for her interview, you know, what outfit is she going to wear? Um, you know, and, you know, to me, uh, you know, I have one outfit for interviews, you know, a skirt, top, heels. Whereas if you're going to work in fashion, you have to really think about it. So she did a whole page on preparing for her interview. I hope there's a colour chart for the Oh, I don't know. I think everything's frozen now. Well, anyway, as she goes towards the end, she talks about um, questions that she wants to ask um, the interview panel. You know, she's really, she's really clued up with what she wants to do. And she has her business card designs. Don't know if any of these links are going to work. No. Oh, well, that's a shame. I will make these all available to you, so don't worry. Ooh. So another course as well is um, the MSC in shipping operations. Now, this was a surprise for me. I did not expect them to come on board at all. So these students, as Christina said earlier, these are entirely like sea-based students. Most of the time they're on ships, okay? And it means the entire course is online as well. These students never come onto campus. Sometimes they do, if their ship's docked into Southampton, they'll pop in to see the lecturers for the first time and say hello and stuff. But most of the time they're at sea, they communicate with each other via Skype and via Moodle. But they have to um, complete some personal development activities for which they use Mahara for. So fingers crossed again. Lovely. Yeah, so once again, a completely different type of student. So these, these students, these professionals, are preparing for moving to a more senior land-based ba position. So completely different context. They have to put together a learning contract. Oh, come on. Yeah, so they have their learning contract. They have their project ideas. Have their feedback. Oh, 
And what I love about this is these students, they never see me. You know, all this they've done themselves using my help video, so I know it works. So when students on campus say, oh, oh I didn't get it, I know they're lying. Because if mature, if mature people who have never used, you know, Moodle or Mahara in their life can put together stuff like this, then I'm sure an 18-year-old with loads of technology can do something. And then another one is the um, geography and environmental studies. Now, I was very fortunate that this guy um, that took this course was part of, um, he was a teaching and learning fellow, so he was a big champion of Mahara in the beginning during the research stages. And he gets his students to put together their research findings. So it's not personal development, it's just a portfolio display in their research work. <coughs> Which I think is nice, it's better than having to do it on a bit of paper. And the students think that as well. I think they're struggling with all the content on the page, the network. But anyway, so those were the first steps. And obviously, you know, having these champions that I can show off at Solent conferences meant that I can pick up new people along the way. So the second year, it started picking up. And this one here, the PG Cert in Teaching and Learning in Higher Education, is where it really kicked off. Because these were academics at Solent. These were teachers that were having to use Mahara as part of their own assessment, which meant that they now had the knowledge, the working knowledge of how to use it, how assessments can be done, and then decide whether or not they want to use it with their students. So I was ecstatic. And the fact that um, Dr. Barbara Lee was the main um, course leader for this, it was just great because I knew they were going to get really good support. So these students put together practice portfolios. Um, they were mainly for um, a collection of files and documents, but some of the um, academics who were um, doing like visual type work, they could actually add their own videos to it as well. So the whole idea of this portfolio was to show how they embed employability activities with their students, because it was all about what can the academic do to improve their CPD, which would then impact positively on their students. So this academic was able to show videos of her and her students working with the younger generation of students um, to promote fashion. And then we've got other things like the business foundation year. So this is over 100 students studying a foundation year before they actually start their degree. So this was quite a biggie. I was quite concerned that there wasn't going to be enough time to support them. But it worked. It worked very, very well. And what was really good is that we had a couple of students who decided they wanted to be their own ambassadors and help their, um, their fellow peers. And in fact, um, the bottom one, uh, Bradley, he actually spoke at last year's Mahara UK conference. I persuaded him, go on, give it a go. And he thought, OK, I'll give it a go. And he was fantastic. The way he dealt with the questions afterwards, I was so proud. But, but yeah, so these are, this was his presentation. Um, I will share these slides. Um, with you, but you can actually see him talking about his experience off uh, Mahara from a student's perspective. So if you really want to think what students think, then it's all there. And then finally, my other um, flagship one, because these are the, the ones that really shout out about Mahara at Solent, is the architectural technology. Now these students um, are designing the next generation of buildings and they produce amazing portfolios and before all their stuff had to be printed out so all their CAD work all their really cool computer work could not be shown online so having a portfolio where they can gather it all together was just brilliant and hopefully this will load so this portfolio the whole point of it was um, these are first year students who want to become architectural technologists and what they are asked to do is to put together a portfolio which could evidence their skills as an architectural technologist so they could apply to become a certified member in their final year. So in the first year the lecturers got them thinking like a professional before they've even finished their course. So throughout the three years of studying they can just whip out the rubbish stuff and start updating it every time they do something good. So this guy, he started off as a pastry chef or is there a posher word for it? I'm not quite sure. 
But um, yeah, so he was used to making fine, intricate, beautiful bits of food that you just want to eat straight off the screen. And he talks about how his attention to detail, that's what gave him the skills to do the tiny little drawings for architectural technology. Come on. And this is where the students actually started to use external tools. So Pascal yesterday did a great workshop on embedding tools using Mahara to sort of collate external sources. And uh, these students loved um, issue, you know, being able to convert their work into a PDF, upload it to an external site, and then embed it into a Mahara page meant that their work can be seen online that looks a bit better than just a document to download. Wow, he's uploaded his assignment. That's new. <gasps> I wonder if he realises he's done that. So I've got um, Dr. Janet to speak to you right now. She was one of the students on the PG Cert in Teaching and Learning. So she is an academic, but she is a student in this case, and she talks about what it was like for her approaching Mahara for the first time. My name is Janet Bonar. I'm a fairly new academic here at Southampton Solent University. I've been, for a number of years, I was an engineer and a scientist working in semiconductor technology. I'm now teaching in the engineering group here. So I teach a lot of things uh, related to engineering. A lot of that's math, but there's other things about manufacturing. Last year, as part of my teacher training, I did a portfolio of activities around uh, continuous professional development and employability. And the assessment for that was to create a portfolio of activities using my portfolio. That was my first experience of it. Um, I really liked it. My use of my portfolio was to upload a whole series of documents. So the assessment brief outlined that I needed to provide a number of things. So for example, I had to have a CPD plan, then I had to have a draft of CPD plan with comments from other people, then I had to show how I was updating it. So what the assessment was looking for was the evolution of my CPD plan. And so for my portfolio, that worked really well. I had a printed out version that I discussed with my colleagues. I scribbled all over it, I scanned that in, and then uploaded that. So that gave me the another piece of evidence. And then I had a final version of the document. So the nice thing was I had a range of inputs. I had some Word documents. I had some things with scribbles on them that I could upload as PDFs, and then I had a final document. So it worked really well to capture those stages. I liked the fact that it was entirely in my control. I could upload things when I wanted to. I could sort of see my progress. I liked the fact that I made my own uh, profile so I could have a silly picture of myself there. That was really fun. Um, the alternative way of doing that activity would probably have been to collect those all on paper and just stick them in a binder. Um, I think actually being able to do it electronically meant that I was more tempted to update things. Otherwise I would have said, oh, okay, that's good enough, I'm just going to stop here and stick this piece of paper in. And it allowed me to um, really think about whether or not I could improve things further and then easily upload them and delete something if I thought it was not relevant. When I heard that we were going to use my portfolio for this assessment, I was a bit apprehensive, um, despite being an engineer, sometimes uh, not the fastest adopter of new technology. However, you know, it's not a choice. You have to get on with lots of different things. So the training we had consisted of uh, a talk from Sam who said, it's really not so hard, a video training from Sam saying, it's really not so hard, and you know, it really wasn't. Um, and then when I actually got down to grips with actually loading my documents, I then followed with the video instructions. Once having done it, I thought, actually, this is really very easy. And then the difficulty is if you do it once and then you come back to it in six months, you need a crib sheet, I think, probably of instructions. So if you use it regularly, it will be very straightforward. If you just use it once, there's a fair amount of learning that you have to do. I think students would see it in the same way as a staff member would. Um, so if you're going to use it for students, what you'd have to do is get them to use it continuously, not just upload everything in one go, but to continue to use it like once every couple of weeks or once a month. It will stay in your mind. It's not that hard, but it's not like other things. So therefore, there is a, some you know, new learning stuff that you need to make sure you take on board. My portfolio seems like a very good tool and very flexible tool that can be used to collect any kind of information you collect over time. Um, you could upload a Word document and that would be it, but that would, that's kind of pointless. What, you, what it's really good for is when you have a whole series of things. So one of the units I teach is um, quality and product uh, 
product development and in the quality systems, and I mean things like ISO 9000 or various quality tools. So that's a, I think of those quality tools as structured thinking. So what I set my students for logbook activities is a whole series of things where they need to perform a failure mode effects analysis. So they need to, we go through it in the class, um, people learn the technique, and then I want, to sh I want them to show me they understand it by doing an FMEA on an object of their choice. So it's a structured thinking tool. Right now it's done in a logbook. That's the kind of old-fashioned engineering way of doing things. It's sensible if you need to write something down every day, but I'm asking the students to prepare something. They're going to think about it. I've given them a template they can work on, a Word template. Why am I then asking them to pay, cut it out and paste it into their logbook? That's a very old-fashioned thing to do. I think it, they would get, I'd get much better results if I said, this is going to be an electronic hand-in. You're going to create a series of um, documents in various forms, and then you're going to upload them one by one, and I'm going to mark a selection of them. The other reason I think it would be good to use that for logbook is I think the paper logbook is something that's difficult uh, or n it's really not engaging for students to work on. It's something that uh, it th has throwback to an earlier era. When I was working as an engineer, I did use it for some things, but I used the computer for a lot of things. And why am I asking my students to do something that's very outdated? If I'm going to say that they need to go out and get jobs, they need to do things in a modern way. So that's another reason it's both the technology would be useful, but I think it's an up-to-date technology, and the students would engage with it better. Now, what I love about that is I haven't had to do anything. She's already decided how she's going to use Mahara. She's already planned it. She's already started writing her assessment briefs, and I've done nothing. All I did was help her at the beginning when she was a student. And She's just one of many lecturers who finish the course who say, right, I know what I'm doing. Can you just have a look at my assessment brief before I give it to my students just to make sure I've got the correct terminology? So that is fantastic. So what I say to you is if you do teach training courses at your institution, get them using Mahara as part of their assessment because it's a very quick win. Very quick win. So the momentum was picking up, more and more people were trying to use it and the word was spreading that Mahara is this magical tool that gets your students to think about employability, it actually gets them to plan a career, not just I'll see what happens when I graduate, no they already decide what they want to do before they finish. So I was getting lots of phone calls, can you come and speak to my students, can you come and do this for me? I was like, no, have you really thought about what it is you want to do? And I compare Mahara now to what a wiki was six years ago. I would get phone calls from academics saying, can I have a wiki on my Moodle? Yes. Okay. Well, why do you want a wiki? Oh, people are talking about them, so I want one. No, it's not the way to do things. You tell me what it is you want your students to do, I'll help you find the correct technology to support it, if you need technology at all. And it's exactly the same with Mahara. I want my students to use Mahara. Why? Oh, I don't know, I hear it's good. Well, we need to have a chat. So we sort of developed a sort of process, so it wasn't just me doing all the work, it was, um, you know, lots of people could then pitch in, all my colleagues that, you know, focuses on other tools, they can start helping me with the Mahara stuff. So we had this approach, and it's kind of like a model, a loose model, it wasn't strict. So we would invite the lecturer to come and talk to us, they come to us with their ideas, they tell us what it is they want their students to do. So if it's a logbook, we show them all the different tools that are in Mahara that can support logbook activities. So this lecturer can actually see what it's actually like to build a logbook there in front of them and they can say, oh yeah, that's easy, they'll be able to do that, I understand. Then what I will do is I will take their ideas and I'll create a mock-up page for them. I'll, I will actually make that page. That's if they don't want to do it. I do try and encourage them to have a go themselves, but you know they're very busy. I understand, I used to be a lecturer years ago, I know it's hard. So I'll have a go at making a mock-up page with lots of lorem ipsum, so people say, oh, you speak Latin. No, I really don't. <laughs> I just cheat. Um, and then um, the academic will write their assessment brief, and we will sit together and make sure that it, you know, it is asking the students to do what it, yeah, the academic expects them to do. And then um, via the VLE, I'll just drop in a couple of videos that are already pre-made as part of generic help in the help site to help the students along. And this started about two years ago and since then you know, it's really, really helped because then I can understand what it is the lecturers are doing with their students and I don't get the shock of 100 students at my office door the day before the, the hand-in date saying, I've done nothing, can you help me? So I know what's coming up. So yeah, so it carried on growing. So technology foundation year, another 
you know, large cohort of students all having to use Mahara as a logbook. Um, Beyond's advertising, they were starting to use it. Fashion marketing management, you know, like, wow, I'm getting into the fashion group now. Uh, business marketing, that was only because the business foundation you know, was doing so well with Mahara, they now continue it throughout all their three years once they've started their degree, which is brilliant. Um, leisure and tourism management, so the diverse range of courses were growing, so it is brilliant. So this meant more people needed supporting and we had to really think about how we could make our Mahara help them. So we had um, a couple of uh, Skype calls with Pace University over there looking at usability and ways that um, Mahara could actually you know, be used as a platform to help as well as um, to use as a tool. So we, we had a play and um, we came up with a new dashboard design. So when a student first goes into our Mahara, and by, this is what ours looks like, it's very bright, um, if they have absolutely no idea what an ePortfolio is, they can go to the What button and say, OK, what is an ePortfolio and how do I use it? So there's help in there for them. If um, they're using it for assessment, they can go to the How, where there's assessment guidance, but there's also guidance there for lecturers as well. And then finally, C. So this is where they can actually go and see examples of ePortfolios in practice you know, real live ones that students have allowed me to sh share with the whole university. So they can, they can actually see what's being expected of them. And then finally, within, under the sea as well, I've done a one hour induction activity. Very, very simple. You know, create a page, add content to it, and share it. Yeah, so within one hour, students are able to create a page, add content, and share. Those are the basic things you need to learn when constructing an e-portfolio page. So this what, how, see, then started moving into the other support areas. So if you go to the content tab, we now have, instead of just the icon, we've got the what, how, see again. So a student can click on that, and then once again with the what, how, see, they can see what is a profile. You know, how do I do it? Let's see some examples of a profile page. You know, and this now goes throughout the entire portfolio. So, that, is, that again has helped um, some of the support requests because students can then help themselves. So this context sensitive help, it's there for them. And like I say, we um, built a help site for all users. So uh, this is open. So if you go to myportfolio.solent.ac.uk forward slash, ha slash help, it's there, it's open. Please go in and have a look. And if you want to borrow some bits, do it. It's out there, it's open. I don't work there anymore, so. <laughs> Use it while you can before they shut it down. But um, in here, you know, you can find out what is an ePortfolio and what's great about it is the help is created using Mahara. So people can actually see exactly what an ePortfolio does look like. So that's there for you to have a look at if you want to. Um, you know, last year I started to reflect on, okay, we're looking at lots of different courses now and they're all being used in completely different ways. And these were sort of the five major areas that they you know, seem to be used. So um, for a blog or a journal, some courses use it purely just as a logbook for nothing else. A personal development portfolio to log a journey from where they are now to where it is they want to be and um, uh, record their progress along the way. A shop window, so those students with um, sort of media skills that they want to get their work out there, they don't have the skills to build a website or the money to pay for web hosting, they can use it as a shop window. And what's great is, you know, this is on Mahara on our own um, campus, so they can practice, they can play it putting their shop window together. So if it goes wrong, it doesn't matter, we can wipe it and delete, delete it. And also their content is stored on our servers, not an external server. A document manager, so this is something I'm trying to move away from. You know, if you want to just have a page to upload files to, you can just use Moodle. Why, you know, or the VLE, why you know, go through the learning curve of having to build a page, upload loads of files, extract as a HTML zip file and upload it? No, 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 no. So hopefully that will disappear soon, but you know, that's what some people want to use it for, so I can't stop them. 
And then a competency, competency portfolio, so for like professional skills and professional awards, you know, the elements are there, some people are using it for that. So those are the sort of five major areas, and it isn't just those, they could be a mixture of both. Um, the uh, PR and communications are a mixture of a blog, um, personal development portfolio, a shop window, it covers pretty much all of it. But those are kind of like the flavours. So this year, this is where it starts to get really exciting, and I'm absolutely gutted I'm no longer there to see how this, how this is going to work. But um, our BA Honours Social Work and Health and Social Care degrees have decided, right, we're going technical, we're going online, we are going to stop with the walking around with massive ring binders and get online, because it's so much more practical. So this is exciting for many reasons. The first one is that they're all adults. These are all adult learners. Okay? They're all work-based learners as well, so they spend four days in their work environment, one day on their studies. Um, they only come onto campus very, very rarely, so these are distance learners as well. And it means that they're getting improved feedback because this portfolio is shared with their tutor, but also with their practice educator, which means that you know, they don't have to wait to meet them to show them what they've been working on. They can actually see it live on the screen and give them feedback as well. And as the lecturers say, they feel that they're transforming practice because you know, the nursing um, <coughs> environment is going to move to more digital practice anyway. So why not get them to do it when they're students, get them to not be afraid of starting using new technologies. So I have a couple of comments from our lecturers who were too shy to speak on camera, but I, you know, I wanted to get their voices because they're the, you know, the stars in this. I just support them, but they're, they're the ones that really grab it and they, they get me very excited about what they do. But, so Pilla, she teaches the um, foundation um, in business and um, she was one of my big champions at the beginning. And um, she loves it because the students can personalise and individualise it. Because before, it used to just be you know, market research projects on, in Word documents. And it's like, oh, really? But now the students can actually bring the pages to life with lots of images and embed videos that they find. And they can create their own videos. Some students are actually starting to use um, like online cartoon makers to like, get their message across rather than to write it, which is just brilliant. Yeah, so they can structure and arrange the information on their pages in different ways. So, each portfolio is completely different, which she loves as well. And also they appreciate the freedom that the ePortfolio gives them. So if you do get to go back and see Bradley's presentation last year, he talks about how he just loves using Mahara because it's better than a Word document. You know, he can actually just explore, use all the themes, and embed loads of really cool things, which you can't do in a Word document. So he really, really likes it. And the fact that um, the students can show off their market research skills to potential employers as well, it's just, it's just brilliant for them. And Colin, so absolutely love Colin. He was our, he's our social work um, academic who said, right, we're going online, we're doing it, shut up, you're doing it. You know, no questions asked, it's happening. Um, you know, he says, you know, the social work placements are based on a wide variety of set, uh, settings with diverse geographical locations. So these students are, dotted around the south coast, it's not just in Southampton. And the ePortfolio uh, is enabling design that we hope will enhance and support the communication exchange between practice and the university staff team. So these students don't have to keep coming onto campus with their work, they can just share it with the link. And he wants to enhance the evidential potential of our students, which I think is brilliant, and support their learning. So it's just great that we have academics that will think, OK, I've seen Mahara bubbling over, the, over there. I can see it doing well, hear really good feedback. I'm going for it. And he was one of those as well. And what was great about him as well, he's like, right, I'm going to do it all myself. I just need you just to look over my shoulder every now and then, tell me if I'm doing it right, which is brilliant for me as well. So I do have a page of um, video case studies and um, I'm very happy to play some more at the end if you want to see them. But it's open for you to go and have a look. Um, some of the videos still, still are in draft form but I wanted them on there so at least you could hear what they're saying. So they're a mixture of academics and students talking about their experience and why they're using it. So if I do have time and you do want to see them I will show some more. But it's on the end of the um, support for lecturers as well, so you know, go in, nick some stuff from it, go for it. So I did actually plan to talk for 45 minutes and allow 15 minutes for questions, um, but I wanted to sort of give you sort of my advice and thoughts that I've picked up along the way. So this is you know, 2008, you know, 
so it's seven years of using it. Showcase best in show to inspire next year's cohort. Now this is an entire paper that I did last year at the Mahara conference and how academics are picking you know, the top um, portfolios each year and showing them to the next cohort of students that come up because those students will go, oh, that's what I need to build. So they will try and reach that as a benchmark and then go beyond it. So year on year, the actual um, portfolios improve because the students get more and more creative. So that's a real good one. Share inspiring stories. So and the founda business foundation year, students are all showing um, Sugata Mitra's hole in the wall video and say, look, if these kids who have absolutely no technology knowledge can teach themselves how to use a computer in English with nothing, you can learn how to use Mahara. So stop whinging, go get on with it. You know, so I think it's fantastic. And the students, you know, they love it. Um, yeah, build mock-up portfolios. You know, if, if you don't have enough student portfolios to show, make them. I, I stole my sister's identity at the beginning and built portfolios based on my sister and her sports development degree, you know, just to showcase that you could use it for different things. So put your different hats on, your different egos, and just build, you know, different portfolios, thinking of what different students will do. Um, do you have, you know, the capacity to sort of employ your students to be your peer leaders? You know, could you get your students to do training or do awareness sessions with lecturers or with students? Um, we're finding it's working really, really well, and Solent are currently looking at employing students to be digital um, champions, you know, digi buddies. I think they're going with to help um, lecturers and students improve their digital skills. And I put at the bottom, which I know some people love templates. I'm not a big fan of them because I think it restricts creativity. I mean, of course, you know, there has to be required elements in the page, but, you know, give them a crib sheet, say you have to show these things. I don't care how you do it, these are the items. Especially if there's a mock-up portfolio there for them to use as a base and build upon it, you know. Don't give them a template and tell them to stick to it, unless your awarding body says they have to be done in a certain way. You know, let them be free, it's a, a creative platform. I'd hate to have to use templates all the time. I always push the boundaries. So this is where I might tear up because, like I said, I'm no longer there. So if you do have any questions about Solent's use of Mahara, I really recommend you contact Roger. He's an absolutely lovely man. Um, he has been the developer you know, supporting um, Mahara, so him and Darren, but he's like the main lead on it now. So there's his details. He can get you in touch with other people in the UK as well, because he and um, Domi um, at UCL, they are sort of the main people that support Catalyst in the UK doing the Mahara user groups. So if you want to get in touch with other UK people, you know, go to Roger. It's going to be a fair few years before I'm up and running with Mahara at my new place, especially as the students will be doing um, interesting things like designing guns and weapons and stuff. I don't think they'll want most of that online. So. Um, yeah, there are his details. Please contact him, he is lovely. You know, just, just don't do it in the early hours of the morning. So I think last night, I think they have killed him because he did a workshop yesterday via the UK over here. So good on him. So my, my parting sort of gift to you, and I guess this was like my last project before I left was, you know, we never really had an awareness video at Solent. We had, um, a little animation, I don't know if you've seen it, the Mahara um, cartoon, that was sort of inspired years and years ago. But um, uh, we put together little short snippets of all the case studies and put them into one longer video. So um, I would like to show it to you, and we haven't actually shown this anywhere yet, so you've got a preview. And this one does have nice music in the background, it's not just them talking. Well, when we initially scoped the project out, we wanted to get two things out of it. The first was that we wanted to be sure that it would work with our existing virtual learning environment, because it's very important that we have something that students can access with one click. They're online, they want to use it, there they are. The second was that we wanted it to be very useful for students. So we surveyed students, we asked them what they wanted, how they would want to use it. We did a lot of road testing with them on the portfolio itself and also on the help sheets that have been created for them. You know, the end result is to try and produce something that students want to use throughout the course for their own personal development. So it's got to be a creative space that they feel that they can own. Bottles that we put on a wall and then knock them over. So one of the 
I think for me, the benefits, again, is, is this um, element of allowing different people a different way of showing and demonstrating and meeting the needs of an assessment. And I think it's really good for people like me to get their heads beyond you will write an essay. Um, so it's, it's really quite exciting to give another medium, another learning and teaching method to, to, to demonstrate that and meet the demands of an assessment. And hopefully, um, I do quite a lot of work with Access Solent, which is our department that supports all our students. And I think that if we could get more lecturers looking at how we design, create assessment, then this is in their toolkit as well. And they can enable other students to perhaps meet learning outcomes, but in a different way. The Mahara tool suits the nature of what we want these people to do so well. Because not only are they collecting the evidence for their assessment, but they're starting to, they're building their own awareness of how you can have an online presence that identifies your professional skills. Um, so again, the way that they use Mahara, um, the way that they use my portfolio, means that they are able to present both their own work and themselves as a professional person very effectively. The purpose of the assessment is all about professional development. Development. So we um, use really my portfolio as part of that package and effectively it is the package that enables us to embed professional practice and career development in a way that actually is explainable to students but allows them the freedom and expression to go down a pathway that is right for them as an individual. So whilst ours are all PR students, they're all going down different avenues of public relations and the, my portfolio enables them to do it from that sort of diverse perspective. Having students who enjoy doing a piece of work makes independent learning easy. That's for me, that's the, the portfolio. And from a teaching point of view, I don't need to be in the class to give them feedback. The key ones can um, drop me a, forward it to me and I can give them feedback. The weak ones I can chase and nag them and they don't need to come from the privacy of their own bedroom, they can email me their portfolio and I can give them feedback too. I think we predominantly chose it for its flexibility. I think the fact that it handles both the report academic side of our degree plus the more visual side but also enables the students to embed their life sort of links to their WordPress accounts, their Twitter feeds, um, their LinkedIn accounts, it really does add another dimension to it. Um, and then also when you're marking it, you're not having to type in those links, you can go straight through and have a look at those other things they're submitting. And from a teaching point of view, I don't need to be in the class to give them feedback. I like the fact that it was entirely in my control. I could upload things when I wanted to. I could sort of see my progress. I like the fact that I made my own uh, profile so I could have a silly picture of myself there. That was really fun. Um, the alternative way of doing that activity would probably have been to collect those all on paper and just stick them in a binder. Um, I think actually being able to do it electronically meant that I was more tempted to update things. Otherwise I would have said, oh okay, that's good enough. I'm just going to stop here and stick this piece of paper in. And it allowed me to really think about whether or not I could improve things further and then easily upload them and delete something if I thought it was not relevant. So follow a few basic instructions and take a bit of time and it might be frustrating when you're tech savvy to kind of go back and follow something step by step. You, you kind of got this attitude of figuring anything out, you know. But I would recommend going and following a step by step process. Um, a couple of little things trigger and then once you get them in, it's quite straightforward and it's very simple after that, you know. So follow those steps and learn the terminology and be patient with it. I think because you can like make it completely your own, I think you can change everything about it and you can make it look exactly how you want it to. So when you have a vision in your head, sometimes on blogs like WordPress you can't do that and you can't change everything because you're quite limited for things such as how to pay for themes on like WordPress or Blogger. Um, whereas like my portfolio you can change it to her, like however you want it to look. So I think that's a real big beneficial part of that. So to find out more about my portfolio, first look online at myportfolio.solent.ac.uk forward slash help. There you'll find case studies, lecturer guides and loads and loads of examples of student and staff portfolios. So to embed my portfolio into your course or your assessment, go and see one of the experts in learning technologies. They can help you design activities to support your students' digital literacy and employability. So, that 
is now me. I'm over. Thank you very much for listening. And yeah, I'm very happy to take questions. I'm here you know, for another week as well. So I'm going to be here again on Monday doing a workshop with some uh, lecturers here. So I'm looking forward to that. But I am here all today. I'm here all tomorrow. I'm out tonight as well. So please come and find me and talk to me and tell me what you're doing. Okay, thank you. And I'm very sorry for sniffing. I've been up all night with hay fever, so I'm very happy that my voice lasted. <laughs> I answered everything then. No, no <laughs> questions. Oh, that's a good one then. Yeah. Um, Sam, I, I wondered about initially you sort of had a focus on the sort of whole personal development idea of, of an e-portfolio, and then kind of there was a wave of people coming to you saying we want to use it for assessment, not just personal development. Mm. And I wondered if you thought that that had affected the kind of um, student ownership sort of idea because when you make people do things for mm. assessment in an e-portfolio that's quite a different feeling from developing yeah. your own stuff independently from any mm. assessment requirements yeah def yeah i mean that's what i meant by i felt a bit funny about it yeah. but you know students are students they have to do this work and at the beginning they weren't happy oh i have to learn another tool and you know i can't take this with me when i go and i'm going to do all this work <laughs> But once they actually started using it, they really enjoyed it. And so the initial sort of bumpiness just disappeared because they, they actually enjoyed doing the work. And all of them who have used it for professional development, you know, they've learned new skills which they wouldn't have learned otherwise. You know, they've learned you know, not only the softer skills of you know, how to present myself, how to plan for future, all these sorts of things, but they're learning digital skills as well. And these are the sort of skills that they can take with them to the world of work, which they wouldn't have got without using the e-portfolio. So yeah, a bit bumpy at the beginning, and you know, I didn't feel comfortable, but after seeing over the years how the students have gone from you know, reluctant to, you know, absolutely loving it and sad the next academic year when their tutors aren't using it. You know, that makes me feel like happy that at least it's a job well done, I think. Yes? Um, do they use it for employment and have you had much input from employers? We've tried. Yes. <laughs> right, so um, a couple of years ago we did send out surveys to the local employers and they as much as you want them to get back to you, they don't. They're very, very busy. The few employers that we have spoken to, they didn't, e you know, they don't even know what digital skills are. They don't, you know, digital literacy, they say, what's, what's that? We don't know what that is. All they know is that they want graduates that can just pick up technology and run with it without thinking, without saying, oh, what do I do? Can somebody teach me? So we haven't had much feedback from um, the uh, employers. But maybe that's something that Solent can revisit now it's got a new vice chancellor and a, a different um, vision, maybe. But yeah, I would love to have had more feedback from employers. Certainly, the um, students on the PR and communications that did the work placements, you know, their portfolios were sent to employers before, before um, you know, to secure their interviews. So a lot of students got interviews for a placement based on their portfolios. But you know, those employers weren't expecting anything, so to get a bonus of a, a website of this student and what they can bring to your organisation for those two short weeks, you know, they thought was brilliant, but that's the only feedback I've really got. So, yeah, who's um, This is a question on uh, scalability. Um, I mean, Mahara, Mahara or Red Fork have been around for, it seems like, a long, long time mm. now, and I remember a decade ago when we were first talking about it there, um, there was this sort of evangelical fantasy that all students coming out of schools and going through university would eventually have a new portfolio, mm. so we should get on and do this. And it was <laughs> the idea that it became the basic stock and trade. Um, as someone told me this morning that we have a thousand new students this year, so it's obviously scaled up, it's only mm. possible to do projects. But was it ever your idea at Southampton Solent, and at Always Ambitious University, um, to, to scale it up to that level? And in the end, what level did you have it? lecturers and students involved. Okay, so it was never meant to be a full scale everyone will have an e-portfolio because every course is address every um, like course and subjects have different things that they focus on. At the beginning we thought well you know, there are quite a lot of colleges in the local area who are going to start using Mahara, so we were quite excited that these students are going to come up to Solent and they'll come in with their exported Leap 2A and we can you know, put it in for them. That has never happened. So 
We don't know what, ha what happened to those students' e-portfolios that have come to us from the local colleges using it. Um, certainly the, um, the take-up of it has been growing over the years. Uh, a couple of courses have dropped off because they found other tools more useful, especially um, ones where um, you know, they, they didn't want to use Mahara because it was so restricted in certain ways, like the data allowance and stuff like that. So they've gone with full you know, WordPress blogs and they have to do screen grabs and submit them online because they're not live pages. But you know, we have about 1,500 students that are using it regularly as part of assessment. We probably have 100 who use it off their own backs because they see the value of it, especially the architectural technology students. Um, I remember when the first year piloted it, the second and third years were like, oh, don't we get to use it? So, well, it's not part of your assessment, but you can use it. So some of them actually use it to build their own websites. So, I mean, does that, does that help? Yeah? Um, you know, there is interest in it, but um, it is growing. And, you know, before I left, I had loads of emails from academics going, oh, but you can't leave. I've got loads of ideas. I want to talk to you over the summer to start in September because it's about now they start writing their unit descriptors and assessment briefs for September. So, you know, who knows what's going to happen next year? You know, I'm, I'm not going to know. <laughs> yes, Pascal? Do you um, allow the students to have oh. access oh, sorry. Sorry. Just after they leave? So, so oh, see, that, that's something that I've always been fighting with. Me and Roger, um, we would love our students to be able to go in and edit it for at least a year after they finish. But as soon as they graduate, their IT accounts get switched off. You know, so they graduate in November, and by then, you know, they don't get access. We don't delete the content, so we tell them to you know, get their pages up and running, you know, employer-facing, and just make them public. And then as soon as they don't need them anymore, they can email us and we can delete them, and that does happen. Some we do encourage to export it you know, on a memory stick just in case they go somewhere else with Mahara or Pebblepad and they can plug it in. Um, also, you know, our argument is we could use it for marketing as well. So as soon as they graduate, we can move them to um, a graduate institution. and We can throw master's degrees at them and say, look, come back. You know, your portfolio is still here. Come and do your next step. You know, but you know, at the moment, as soon as they graduate, IT accounts go. Because we're trying to give them a AUT the possibility. Because when I speak to students, I say... They want it, don't life. they? Yeah. You know, this is somewhere you can keep. Mm. You see these, you know, yeah. information forever mm. going. It seems yeah. it's gone up to do all this work. It seems yeah. worthwhile. And they want to have access to it. I mean, I've been cheeky. I hope you don't mind. But okay. um, I've... I've encouraged a few of them to, you know, create account on Mahara.org because that's what I've had to do to move my content from Solent until I'm waiting for a new one to happen at Cranfield. Yeah. So I do say there are free sites out there up to a certain limit, so don't be cheeky and take up all their data, but, you know, the best bits take with that's you. Right. Yeah, but, yeah, the students do want it. I wasn't going to answer that question. So, yeah, oh, cool. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> another, another thing we've... The growth of a, a, a cohort of users that you've had going through, mm. has there been any opportunity for anyone to look at the actual competencies? Like, in New Zealand we call them some key competencies which underline anything across any learning area mm. that have been actually supported and developed mm. further, maybe through the use of developing an e-portfolio. Mm. Has this type of data been collected at all? Nothing's really been, I mean, the university's main focus has been e-assessment and online assessment. Oh, yeah. And it's just been me and Roger and sometimes Christina and, and Nick just like running, trying to you know, do that and do our Mahara support at the same time. Yeah. I, I, uh, I'd love to find out mm. somehow, somewhere that in a big institution using it and then maybe collecting this type Speak of... Speak to Roger and say to him, right, would you like to partner up and trial it? Yeah. There you go, there's an international research project there. If anyone wants to join in, it's Pascal. <laughs> yeah. I saw a hand over there. Yeah. You talked about having um, adult students having a portfolio. Were there any barriers for adult students? Yeah, oh yeah, oh, oh of course, there, yeah, there, there are, but you just have to hold the hand and say, look, it is like riding a bike. It is a little bit of a hump at the beginning, but once you've got used to it, it's absolutely fine. Um, there are 
lots of different resources on our, ha our help site. So there are videos on there, which um, screen, um, you know, Camtasia videos where I talk them through a process. There's um, printed out handouts as well with screen grabs, um, especially for the um, social work and the uh, health and social care students because um, they weren't on campus often. I went to uh, the Southampton General Hospital and did a workshop with them and I found half the group were really really keen and they got off and they were racing ahead of me. I, I had this wonderful workshop and they'd gone and the other half were just sat there waiting for me to tell them the next click. But what really worked was they started budging up and helping each other so I could just stand back and just sort of facilitate rather than teach which is what I hoped for. So yeah, oh, there are always barriers but they're easy to get over. You just have to be confident with them <laughs> and, and tell them that it will work, it will be better. And Lynn, did you have another question? Uh, well, I was just wondering, in terms of lecturers, mm -hmm. um, how you manage to shift, because some of it might have been your case studies, how you, initially people use it as a tool, just to store, as you see. How do you shift them into using the portfolio as a pedagogy? You. Well, you show them what other academics are doing and what other students are putting together, and like, especially the ones that have just been like file uploads. I've looked at the assessment brief and I've interpreted it a different way, and I just go to the academic the following year and say, okay, this is what you're asking your students to do. How about you get them to do this? Which shows like different um, types of res yeah, different types of uh, evidence rather than just file uploads. So that is useful. Um, what was the other bit of your question? I'm just wondering, are there lecturers who came to you for help, or are there lecturers who are quite resistant to wanting to do anything more than use it for assessment? Or oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So there, yeah, there are lecturers who will use it, and they'll, you know, they won't actually ask me for my help either. They'll say, right, you're just going to use it to upload files, and that's when I will say, oh, I notice you're using Mahara. Do you know there is a better way of using it where your students will enjoy it more, and you'll enjoy marking it more? Because having to sort of download a HTML zip file of Moodle and then extracting it and then digging around for the documents is not fun at all. So actually having the text there on the page is a lot easier. But yeah, it is the softly gentle approach to you know, those that, you know, they're using it in anger rather than using it for its full potential. But I, you know, I love my academics, they're all fantastic and you know, I miss them dearly. But yeah, they're an yeah, interesting bunch. Mm. Please join me and give Sam another applause. <laughs>